What is going on everybody? So this video might be a little bit different. Uh, we are going to be setting up a droplet on DigitalOcean. Uh, if you don't know what DigitalOcean is, uh, it is a uh, cloud service. I actually started using DigitalOcean maybe five years ago before I started touching uh, GCP and AWS. Uh, just because it kind of has some safety rails. Uh, I don't think there's too much in here uh, that you can really accidentally click and start something and then go bankrupt. So uh, in this video, we're just going to set up what's called a droplet, uh, which is DigitalOcean's word for uh, a VM server. Uh, and then we will set up a user uh, to SSH in that is not root, uh, but does have pseudo privileges. And then in subsequent videos, we will set up a Django uh, web server with Nginx and Gunicorn. Uh, so let's jump right in. So here I am in DigitalOcean. Uh, if you go to sign in, uh, you can do it with Google, GitHub. You might still be able to do it with email and uh, password only. Uh, and if it's your first time signing up, you get, I think, $300 in free credits. I have a VM that I have this set up on. I've been playing around with for a few weeks. Uh, and you can see it's only cost me a buck sixty-four. So uh, those free credits will definitely give you enough. Uh, and if you already have an account, uh, this really won't cost you too much. Uh, so... I'm just going to do demo project here. Uh, demo project is fine. And educational purposes, perfect. Uh, we can go ahead and skip adding resources. And it looks like we're in the demo project here. And if I do this drop down for manage, we see droplets here. Uh, this I don't really care for. Uh, I already have a droplet here in a different project. I would hope for that not to show up here, but I'll just blur that out before posting. Okay, so uh, we can create a droplet. New York is close to me. Uh, the data center really doesn't uh, matter. And... That's odd that it says uh, choose data center closest without actually saying where those are. Uh, we're just going to use Ubuntu. That's fine. Uh, if you go to the marketplace, you can see uh, there's a whole bunch that are already configured, loaded up, if that's what you need. Uh, basic is fine for our purposes. And we'll just leave that the default. You see uh, $6 a month. Uh, one gig CPU, that's pretty weak, but again, that's fine. Uh, here, it's going to uh, choose SSH keys. Uh, this was a demo that I started, but uh, forgot to make the non-root user. Uh, or you could do a new SSH key. And if you do that, it gives you some nifty directions over here. Uh, SSH key gen. Uh, and let me just close this terminal that's left over from something else and I'll just go ahead and SSH keygen and by default that's going to uh, save that in my dot SSH directory I'm actually just going to call this one demo uh, passphrase if you'd like isn't really necessary uh, and if we go to SSH and actually, I'm going to remove the keys that I already generated just so it's not confusing. And let's try running that key gen again. Actually, you know what? I'm going to control C out of that, go back up one directory, and I would have needed to given it, I should have given it 
the full path to where I wanted those to go. Uh, so I think I could just do move demo star to dot ssh slash dot and there we go now we need to put our public key on the vm so we can ssh to it and we can just go ahead and copy that and we will just paste it in here and SSH demo is fine. All right, that's all we need to get started. So we'll create the droplet. And while that's firing up, uh, just to save ourselves some time in a moment, uh, we can go ahead and if you don't already, uh, you will create a config file in your .ssh directory. I already have one, so uh, that's going to be populated. Uh, demo is just going to be the shorthand name you can refer to it as uh, from the command line or if you're using Visual Studio Code uh, and remote SSH extension from Microsoft, uh, it'll give you a nifty drop down for that. Uh, we will need the IP address and you can see that down here now that the droplet is up and it's 159.203.104.92 and did I just call that demo I believe so and because we Uh, just have the root user, uh, we will just uh, use the user, user root. Control X, Y to save modified buffer, keep the same file name. I just wanna double check that that is indeed the name of my private key. Uh, so now I should be able to use SSH demo for shorthand. Uh, I could also, uh, do a root at, uh, and then the IP address shown here. Uh, but I'll go ahead and use my config file and SSH to demo. All right. Uh, this is the usual stuff when you spin up a VM for the first time. There's a bunch of updates. Uh, 13 are standard security updates. Uh, so you know what? Let's. Give it dash Y so we don't have to type that in. And while that's going, I'm going to search for uh, DigitalOcean Nginx Django setup. And in a subsequent video, this is the guide we're going to be walking through. Uh, but for our purposes, we just want to do the initial server setup guide. They give us a nice friendly link there here. Uh, and once those updates are done, uh, we want to create a user that is not root. So we just need to add user, Gary. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to do password, super secure. Uh, you know what, I will just call this guy Gary. Uh, can leave that blank, that blank. Probably didn't even need to fill out a name. Yes, that's my correct information. All right. Now we are going to user modify add to group dash lowercase a capital G. Linux is case sensitive as all OSs should be. And we are adding Gary to that group. All right. And let's see. Uh, I believe that stands for Unified Firewall. Uh, and we can just skip down to the command, allow open SSH. 
turn on the firewall. Actually, let's check. Ah, uh, yes, it is inactive by default. Uh, so we will want to enable that. All right. And see, it is active and enabled on system startup. So if we reboot, the firewall will be on. And now we can do status. All right. And that should be it. Oh, uh, that is one other thing. Uh, uh, if you're logged into uh, as root and you have password authentication, you use your account by opening up a new terminal session. Uh, let's see. And we'll try to go to this IP address as Gary. See what we get here. Okay, and that is because we do not have the public key in Gary's.ssh directory. So, uh, let's see. There should have been a command to copy that SSH key over. Oh, it looks like the rsync takes care of that for us. So let's just jump right in and do that. So we want to R sync, and I'm bad at remembering the syntax here. Dash dash archive ch own equals Gary colon Gary. Uh, the user we just created, and. Uh, that little tilde is Root's home directory, which has all of the SSH public keys, in this case, just the one that we created. And we are going to go to home Gary, which was a directory created when we created the Gary user. So I forgot to see. Uh, control is your friend. Uh, control, arrow, right or left, uh, skips whole words and things like that can be uh, very efficient. Let's look in our other window and now when we try, here we are as Gary. Uh, and I don't know if I need to prove it, but uh, I can just make a file in Gary's home directory. Uh, and we see it there. A root, of course, has privileges to go to uh, Gary's home directory. And we see that's there. OK. Uh, so in this video, we just spun up a VM on DigitalOcean. Uh, we created a user that isn't root, um, moved SSH keys over, uh, put them in the sudoer group, uh, so they can run the sudo commands. Uh, that's it for this video. In the next video, we will go into uh, installing Django and starting up a web server on DigitalOcean. All right, that's it for this one, and I will see you in another video.